with all the changes eBay is making lately, well, I have to be prepared, you need to be prepared to make changes. And I wanna to talk to you about the changes I'm working on right now. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John with Flippin' Ain't Easy. And Sunday night, making this video, working on some things today, and really overall, this weekend was pretty good. I mean, Friday didn't start off too well, it ended really good, Saturday was a really good day, and then today, for the most part, I mean, I had $39 in sales. And then what was weird is, I had a return that I had received on Friday that prior to doing this video, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna get around to uh, checking it out and refunding the item. And within minutes, I'm telling you, within minutes of refunding this item, I got a sale. And then, a few minutes later when I'm trying to record this video, I get an offer for another decent sale. So. I don't know if there's a correlation to open return requests and you know just maybe eBay slowing you down at least your traffic I don't know uh, maybe it's just a here we go again uh, a sheer coincidence so not a very great weekend maybe we'll get a couple more sales before the night is done and uh, get some residual sales uh, overnight until tomorrow and last Monday sort of was a good day as compared to Sunday so we'll see what happens but I'm making this video not about my sales over the weekend. I'm making it to tell you what I've been doing over the weekend. And what I've been doing over the weekend is really evaluating my business. What am I doing? I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing for the last eight months since I made that big change. And it's been working for the most part. But now over the last month, month and a half, I've been getting a lot of hiccups. And it's not time for a major you know, panic change or anything like that. But it's time to start looking at the listings that I've put up for sale and to try to understand and figure out why these items haven't been selling. So when you do this, you're looking at your title, you're looking at your photos, you're looking at your prices, you're looking at the item description, you're looking at all components of the listing to see where you can do better. Now you guys know that for the longest time, I've been a huge advocate of white, clear backgrounds, and so is Google. But at the same time, what does the buyer want? So I was thinking about this. I know what Google wants. I also know what most buyers want. Most buyers really are put off by looking at a photo that looks, let's just face it, when you take a background out of the photo, it looks stocky. It looks like a stock photo. And for the longest time, I've taken much pride in uh, a lot of my photos looking like stock photos because uh, you tend to, over time, emulate how a lot of these, like Amazons, Target, Walmart, all the, the big retailers, how they take their photos. And you try to um, incorporate that into what you're doing. You know, a lot of the shoe sellers online, uh, you know, your Tommies, uh, other folks that sell a lot of shoes, you, you see what they're doing and you try to emulate a little bit what they're doing because it's successful for them. So when you're taking your own photos, they look very professional. But I think for many, for many buyers, that can sometimes be a little bit off-putting. And you see some really nice photos that maybe people put up on Poshmark. There's no white background, but yet they sell. So I started to think, well, maybe I can make both Google and the average buyer happy in maybe how I change and do my photos. And what I mean by that is we've set up a little photo booth and it's a little small table we picked up, has some wood grain on it and we have the tan paint already or the beige paint in our house anyway. So um, it's sort of like a two-tone area where I can go in and put smaller items and take a really nice photo, good lighting, but Google doesn't want that. So my plan, and this is what I think I'm going to try, hear me out, 
and tell me down below what you think. I'm op always open to criticism, uh, you know, if I'm doing something that doesn't make any sense. But the idea is to take my photos of my smaller items, like shoes or anything around that size or smaller, and take all my photos, all my different angles with that backdrop, the little wood grain table and the, like the beige wall. And it looks really sharp. But I'm going to take the photo that I'm going to use for my gallery photo and I'm going to remove the background for that one. Okay. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that as my first photo with the background removed. I'm going to take the same exact photo without a background removal, which will be my second photo. And then usually I have around 10 plus photos that will just be a natural photo. Um, and I think that really looks good. The buyer is probably going to like it. Once they click into my listing, they go past the first image and it'll give them a, a better idea that it's not a stock item. Yes, it looks like I have it in stock. I'm not just putting a random image from a website on here. For me, it is something that I plan on incorporating, going through my older listings and redoing those photos. Because what do I have to lose? I think a lot of times a buyer will look at your listing, not just the title, but the photo. Now, of course, if I have that stock photo as the first photo, is that off-putting to, to maybe the buyer and they're not even going to click into my listing. But I don't want to lose the external um, impressions and page views gained from Google shopping as well. So my hope is that that my, my listing is not going to be just stock looking photos from here on out and if a buyer clicks into my listing they'll see that and it won't be so off-putting if that makes sense. So that's the changes that I'm going to be making. I'm not going to do it all overnight. I'm going to incorporate that in my new listings and I'm going to spend about an hour a day going through not just the main account, but the other account. Now you've got to remember the main account has larger boxes. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about the larger items because if I'm being hundred percent honest with you guys, where I take my photos in my garage, it is just a hot mess. The wall is all screwed up. Um, the tables, you know, the little cover that I have, the white cover to protect my uh, tabletop is really bad in bad shape. So I'm going to utilize the background removal on that those photos almost 100% of the time. It's only on the photos that I'm able to take inside here on the smaller area, but it to me is really ideal uh, for just your smaller average size item. And that's kind of going to be where I focus my efforts uh, moving forward. So want to know what you guys think. Are you making changes to what you're doing? Maybe your photos. Are you going through your titles? Uh, another thing that I'm also doing is I'm allowing the Bard AI to create my item description. And what's great about it is you just tell it to please make me a optimized item description for this item and uh, please do not make mention of the items condition. Okay. And then like with shoes, I, I listed about 10 shoes today, 10 pairs of shoes. And all I did was place the brand and the model number. So it's like Nike. It's one two three four five six dash one zero zero and it would look it up for me and determine what the shoe was along with a picture uh, of that shoe so of course I can verify that it's talking about the right shoe and it did a nice little presentation with bullet points and a little synopsis of the shoe without over hyping the shoe and, and almost every time I uh, almost every shoe I did today it it really came up with a nice item description packed with keywords which is key so I'm doing those two things right now and I'm just gonna see now I'm not thinking that it's going to you know be the uh, magic bullet that changes everything I mean my sales aren't that bad as it is 
but I'm always looking for improvement. And if you're looking for improvement, you need to start thinking outside the box. Now maybe by me optimizing the first photo and then leaving the other photos as I take them in my listing, maybe that won't do a darn thing. But I gotta tell you, my photos are looking a lot better. I don't know if it's maybe I have better lighting in that room. I don't know if it's just the way I'm taking the photos, the shoes that I'm taking photos of are just kind of popping with that backdrop that I have, but I like it. And I'm gonna hope that my buyers like it as well. And you know what? If it doesn't work out, I'll just take those photos and just remove the background and go back to what I was doing. But uh, that's my plan. I wanna hear about your plan down below. If you're one of those sellers that, whether you're selling for the last two years or the last 20 years, if you're doing the same thing over 20 years, if you've been selling for 20 years and you're doing the same thing and haven't made any adjustments or any changes, you're probably not doing as well as you, you could, have be, could be doing if you made those changes. So that's my philosophy, that's my plan. But figuring that all out is yet another example of how flipping ain't easy. And I want you to check out one of these videos that YouTube thinks you're gonna like. And in the meantime, check out the live today, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and we will see you then, and have a great rest of your day.